February 23rd, the Holy Priestly Martyr Polycarp, Bishop of Smyrna. Polycarp, this great apostolic man, was born a pagan. St. John the Theologian converted him to the faith of Christ and baptized him. In his childhood, Polycarp became an orphan, and according to a vision in a dream, Callista, a noble widow, took him as her own son, raised and educated him. From his childhood, Polycarp was devout and compassionate. He strove to emulate the life of St. Buculus, then Bishop of Smyrna, as well as the holy apostles John and Paul, whom he knew and heard. St. Buculus ordained him a presbyter, and before his death, Buculus designated him as his successor in Smyrna. The apostolic bishops who gathered at the funeral of Buculus consecrated Polycarp as bishop. From the very beginning, Polycarp was gifted with the power of working miracles. He expelled an evil spirit from the servant of a prince, and through prayer stopped a terrible fire in Smyrna. Upon seeing this, many pagans regarded Polycarp as one of the gods. He brought down rain in times of drought, healed illnesses, discerned, prophesied, and so forth. He suffered during the reign of Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Three days before his death, St. Polycarp prophesied, In three days I will be burned in fire for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. And on the third day, when the soldiers arrested him and brought him to trial, he cried out, Let this be the will of the Lord my God. When the judge counseled him to deny Christ and to acknowledge the Roman gods, Polycarp said, I cannot exchange the better for the worse. The Jews especially hated Polycarp and endeavored to have Polycarp burned alive. When they placed him bound at the stake, he prayed to God for a long while. He was very old, gray, and radiant as an angel. The people witnessed how the flame encircled him, but did not touch him. Frightened by such a phenomenon, the pagan judges ordered the executioner to pierce him with a lance through the fire. When he was pierced, so much blood flowed from him that the entire fire was extinguished, and his body remained whole and unburned. At the persuasion of the Jews, the judge ordered Polycarp's lifeless body be incinerated according to the custom of the Hellenes. So the evil ones burned the dead body of the lifeless one whom they could not burn while alive. St. Polycarp suffered on Great and Holy Saturday in the year 167 A.D. The Venerable Damien Damien, a monk of the monastery of Esphigmenu on Mount Athos, was a contemporary and companion of the great Cosmas of Zagrafu. He lived a life of asceticism on Mount Samaria between Esphigmenu and Hilander. He died peacefully in the year 1280 AD. When he died, a pleasant and sweet-smelling aroma emitted from his body for forty days. Hymn of Praise, St. Polycarp His holy ones God preserves that until their appointed time they do not perish, until they complete their task they perish not. The elder Polycarp and saint of God, with his deacon journeyed in a road in, spent the night the elder prays while the deacon sleeps, until an angel of God appeared to the elder and commanded that they immediately arise, and from this road in to depart, for the inn is soon to be destroyed. The young deacon, the elder, awakes, but the deacon fatigued slept on, in that the angel appeared again, and again the same warning gave. Again the elder, his deacon, awakes, but a heavy sleep the deacon overpowered. One moment he awakes, the next moment he is drowned in sleep. And a third time the angel appeared, and a warning he issues for the third time, that this was not a deceit the elder perceived, but a warning from God verily. The saint jumped, and the deacon he lifted, and from the road in walked out. And as soon as they walked out from the inn to the foundation, the entire house was destroyed. All who were in it perished. 
because of certain kinds of secret transgressions. With fright the young deacon was filled, but in prayer the saint was silent. To the Most High God they offered thanks. They continued their way under the stars. Reflection St. Polycarp writes the following to the Philippians about a priest Valentine who fell into the sin of avarice and secretly hid money belonging to the church. I was deeply saddened because of Valentine who, at one time was a presbyter among us, who had forgotten the rank the priesthood bestowed upon him. That is why I beg you, beware of greed and remain pure and just. Restrain yourself from every vice. He who cannot restrain himself, how will he be able to teach others restraint? He who submits to avarice pollutes himself with idolatry and numbers himself among the ranks of pagans, who is not aware of God's judgment. As Paul teaches, do you not know that the saints will judge the world? 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2. In other words, I have not noticed anything similar among you, neither have I heard anything among you, among those whom blessed Paul lived a life of asceticism, and about whom he speaks with praise at the beginning of his epistle to the Philippians. He boasts of you throughout the churches, which at that time knew God, and we did not yet know him, Polycarp and the inhabitants of Smyrna. Brethren, that is why I am very saddened because of Valentine and his wife. May God grant them true repentance, and you be prudent in that, and not count him as an enemy. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 15 But endeavor to correct them as suffering and prodigal members, that your entire body be sound. Acting thusly, you build yourselves up. Thus the saints dealt with sinners, cautiously and compassionately, cautiously to prevent others from a similar sin, and compassionately in order to correct and save sinners. Contemplation to contemplate the Lord Jesus in conversation with the woman of Samaria, St. John, chapter 4. How at first the mind of the woman was smothered completely by carnal sophistry. How the meek Lord gradually leads her mind toward a loftier and spiritual reasoning. How this encounter culminated in the conversion of many to Christ. How the scattered seeds of the Lord at first seemingly decays in the physical mind, and how later it resurrects, grows, ripens, and brings forth much spiritual fruit. Homily, about the works of Christ. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do, bear witness of me, that the Father has sent me. St. John chapter 5, verse 36. Brethren, what are those works of Christ? Those are the works of the householder who had returned from a journey and found the home robbed and desolate. Those are the works of the physician who entered into the most contaminated hospital and brought medicines and began to heal. Furthermore, those are the works of the king who returned to his country and found it divided and ruined and his subjects as slaves in a strange land. Those are the works of the elder brother who journeyed to a distant land to seek his younger brothers who, wandering and prodigal, impoverished and became wild. Those are also the works of the healer, shepherd, hero, and provider. Truly these are not minor works. The average man with the greatest worldly knowledge skill and courage would not be able to accomplish even in three thousand years those works which Christ completed in three years. Not only one man, but all men of all times, together, would not be able to complete the works of Christ for all eternity. How did the Lord complete so many works? He completed them with the aid of five main miracles, humility, words, deed, blood, and resurrection. What do the works of Christ witness? First, the works witness that the earth did not send him, but heaven. Second, that an angel did not send him, but the heavenly Father himself. Third, that 
for such works no one is sufficient except him who is as great as God, who is as wise as God, as almighty as is God, as merciful as God, yes, who himself is equal to God. Oh, how all of our works are insignificant compared to the works of Christ, with only one kernel of Christ's goodness and zeal, diligence and truthfulness, can we complete our work perfectly. Grant us that kernel, O Lord Jesus, for we cannot either find this kernel on earth nor deserve it. To you be glory and thanks always. Amen.